my groovy growers out there. I just wanted to talk to you about agar today. I put uh, together a list of the top 10 things I really wish I would have known before I started working with agar. Uh, would have saved me a lot of headaches. So, uh, I don't have a whole lot of battery left on this camera. Let's get to it. Uh, number one is to know your bacteria. Um, is it coming from the tissue sample? Is it coming from the side where it didn't seal properly? Um, does it look milky? Does it look watery? Is it coming in little spots? You really, really, really want to know bacteria. Occasionally you are going to run into other, you know, mold type contaminations. Uh, black, green, blue, you know, funky looking molds, but uh, the main bitch of the bunch is definitely going to be bacteria. So know that bacteria like the back of your own butt cheeks. Um, number two, if your growth is coming in kind of slow, try lowering your nutrition. Um, if you're using light malt extract, try using a gram and a half, two grams less, and uh, see if that promotes uh, faster growth or rhizomorphic growth. I found it to be quite useful. Uh, number two, um, you can use uh, the Glad Clean Wrap instead of Parafilm. Parafilm's definitely a little bit more expensive, uh, but you can take a roll of Glad Clean Wrap and take a hacksaw and cut it into these, uh, you know, a little bit bigger than an inch, uh, one inch section or something like that. Um, just make sure you uh, take a really sharp razor blade and cut off all these little chingaderas here on the edges because, uh, yeah, it makes unrolling it and wrapping your plates a pain in the ass. If you do use this stuff also, um, uh, like I said, it is a lot cheaper, um, but I, I did have some more plates get contaminated using this than using the parafilm. Um, and if you do use it, make sure you apply some kind of heat. Grab some uh, barbecue tongs or something, hold it in front of the space heater, hold it on over the stove top. Uh, you want to apply just en enough heat to make this shrink wrap kind of suck tight around your plates. Um, Number four. Uh, you really want to be quick about it. When you're working in front of your flow hood, you know, um, is work as if you were working in open air. You really want to just open that plate, get your tissue on it, close it back up, wrap it quick. Um, be as fast as you can when you're uh, when you're working with agar. Don't dilly daddle and fiddle fart around in front of the flow hood. It, that's when your plates are going to get some type of contamination. Um, number five, wear gloves at all times from when you pour your first plate till you wrap the last one. You want to keep your gloves on, keep spritzing your hands with rubbing alcohol because, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I tried just like rubbing alcohol on my hands and, and working with these plates and yeah, no, that's it. You'll be lucky if you have like two out of every 12 survive uh, if you're not wearing gloves. Wearing gloves definitely helped a lot. Uh, number six, let your agar cool down to, I mean, obviously you let it cool too much. It's going to start pouring out in little lumps, um, but you want to let it cool down to cut back on the amount of condensation that's going to be inside your plates. Um, it just really uh, helps and uh, promotes good growth if there isn't a ton of moisture in there. So yeah, let your agar cool down a little bit. Uh, number seven, this one has actually been really, really helpful. You'll see how I have my plates here. Um, they're actually stored upside down. I'm just going to turn one over for just a second. Um, ooh, that's a pretty one too. So, uh, yeah, just having the, uh, the water or the, the condensation that is in there, and there's not usually going to be a little bit, um, uh, facing downward. So it's not dripping on your, uh, on your sample is, um, yeah, it's just going to help keep your culture clean for a little bit longer. And uh, let's see, number eight, I put down these uh, these reusable um, uh, agar plates. These are the, I can't remember what it's called, polyprene or something like that. It's a type of... Uh, type of plastic that you can put in the autoclave um, and re-sterilize it as opposed to trying to sterilize, you know, the, the cheap little shitty ones with some other method. Um, I've just had a ton of more success since I started working with the, these agar plates that I can, or excuse me, petri dishes that I can re-sterilize. 
So um, I recommend getting some of those. And then uh, another thing about the parafilm, I did notice. You'll see I have these like all spread out. I'm not stacking them on top of each other. Not so much with the Glad Cling Wrap, but if you stack up these uh, plates with the parafilm on them, parafilm on them um, they'll kind of stick to each other and it can put these tiny little micro tears uh, on the edges where um, you know air can get in there with a, some type of bacteria and contaminate your plate um, so yeah it, when you, I just I noticed when I'm stacking them on each other that's when they can get those little tears in them so I kind of keep them out them I mean I'm sure eventually I'll end up doing so many plates I have to stack them no matter what but for now I got this face so I got them all spread out uh, and then number nine, practice good posture. When you're doing this work in front of your uh, flow hood um, or in your still air box, it can definitely like start to pinch that middle part of your back, you know, just the, like just below your shoulder blades. I don't know. I uh, kept, you know, doing, especially when I was, you know, first starting off, it just took me 10 times longer to do everything and it would just fuck off my back. So... If you want to save your back a little bit, just kind of keep in mind to practice good posture when you're doing all this stuff. Uh, and then I think number 10 is just, you know, stick with it. It's, uh, that's just about it. You'll get there eventually. It's, you know, probably going to be like really frustrating at first, but um, definitely pays off having, you know, jars that aren't all sweaty and funky looking and just having like the nice clean mycelium that you know like the pictures on the shroomery message boards and shit um it really is like a i work with it exclusively with ar now so i can bring old spore prints back to life and all of that type of stuff uh but anyway yeah just don't give up you'll get there Alrighty, i think that's about it take care y'all peace